Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. You may be, you may be seated tonight. We had a good time on Sunday night hearing some tremendous testimonies of what God has done in the lives of people that come to this assembly or have been come out of this assembly. We're grateful for what God is doing and He will continue to do. I mean, there are others. I mean, God is working. So thankful for it. Praise God. God is building a church. Hallelujah. He is building a church. Praise God. And I just want to be a part of it. Praise God. I want to be involved as much as I can be. Praise God. And I trust that's what you want to do too, is be involved as much as you can be. Praise God. All right. Let's take our Bibles tonight. Let's go to James chapter 3, beginning with verse 13. We're going to wrap it up tonight. This is going to be, we have talked to you about the contrast in origin, the contrast in behavior or how they work. And then tonight we're going to talk about the contrast of outcome. The outcome. So we've talked about the origin. We've talked about the behavior or how it operates, probably contrast in operation. And then the last, tonight we'll talk about the contrast of the outcome. So James writes to us in James 3, 13, who is wise and understanding among you, let him show by good works conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Just let me throw some notes at you here that I wrote down, some things that I've already said. Amen. Just again, notice it is talking here about the wisdom from above, uh, the meekness of wisdom. Meekness, the meekness it's referring to here is right use of power. Right use of power. And of course, wisdom here is the right use of knowledge, which, I mean, let me just say this to you. Amen. Attitude and action go together. Okay, attitude and action go together. All right, verse number 14. Hallelujah. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. Amen. Verse 15. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. Again, Amen. The origin of the worldly wisdom is not from above. It's earthly, sensual, demonic. Okay, let's go on here. For where envy and self-existing exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. Verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Hallelujah. It's first pure. Praise God. Again, God's wisdom is holy. In some time in the near future, I'm going to be talking about the holiness of God. I've talked about it before, but I'm going to talk about it again to the congregation, the holiness of God. Notice it says it's first pure, it's chaste, it's free from defilement. Okay, God is holy. Amen. So God's wisdom leads to a purity of life. If you see somebody, even a believer, whose life is not pure, it's in contrast to what we're supposed to be, you know this, that they are not operating in the wisdom of God, that they're operating in the wisdom of the world. Man's wisdom may lead to sin. God's wisdom will lead to purity. Amen? Hallelujah. All right. Let's move on then. Verse 18. Oh, we didn't finish that. First pure, then peaceable, gentle, Willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And then verse 18. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Praise God. I've got a couple other things. Amen. I'm just writing these. I'm going to give these things to you. Hallelujah. First of all, I actually want to, I'm going to save some of my side notes here that are different than my other notes. All right. When you came to Jesus Christ, you did not receive the spirit of this world, all right? The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is 
from God. Hallelujah. So when you were born again, you received the Spirit that is from God, God's Spirit. It does not operate the same way that the, world, that the world's wisdom operates. Hallelujah. You've got to understand, we are not going to fit in to our society. If you're trying to fit into society, you are going to find yourself operating in the wisdom of this world. They think different. They act different. They talk different. Amen. They dress different. Amen. They have other desires and loves. Amen. But as a child of God, we have the Spirit of God in us. Hallelujah. You've got to understand, the flesh of man has never, ever been in agreement with God since Adam fell in the garden. Amen. Adam became rebellious. And my son pointed this out to me uh, some weeks ago, and I thought it was an excellent point. Amen. God had given to Adam dominion of the world. If you read the Scriptures, He gave dominion to Adam. Amen. But when Adam rebelled, amen, God allowed the world to rebel against Adam. You understand? In other words, it goes back to the old law of God, the law of harvest. You reap what you sow. You sowed rebellion. It came back to you, amen, in having to labor and sweat and and fuss with this world to try to make a living. It always pays to walk with God. It always pays to follow Him and serve Him. It really does. Amen. Amen. In other words, God's wisdom does not make a life empty. It makes it full. I'm so glad to be serving God tonight. This world out here thinks I'm just a poor sucker. They don't understand. They'll never understand until we get to the end of this thing. Unfortunately, then it'll be too late for them. All right, so here I am. Now let's get back to, amen, this last session that we're going to deal with, and that is the contrast in outcome, okay? So let's go back to James 3, 16. Just hang out with me here tonight, okay? James 3, 16, this is the two verses we're going to use tonight for, for where envy and self-seeking exist. Confusion and every evil thing are there. We're going to talk about outcome tonight. Verse 18. Let's go to verse 18, and we'll we'll be referring to these verses a number of times. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Amen. So you get the two contrasting just between those two verses. Now, a simple statement. You may want to write this down because it's a good statement. Okay? Amen. Origin determines the outcome. Origin determines the outcome. In other words, amen, if it's of this earth, amen, it produces worldly results. If it is the wisdom of God which comes from above, it produces spiritual results. Amen. So origin determines the outcome. In fact, brothers and sisters, I encourage you to examine your words, your actions, as we we just interrelate amongst ourselves as a body. I encourage you to examine, amen, how you interact with people out there. Amen. And again, if you have strife, you need to examine why you have strife. It may not come from you. The Apostle Paul writes to us in Romans chapter 12, and he says, as much as lieth within us, live at peace with all men. So there are times that it's not coming from us, and then unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, there are times that come right from us. So the origin determines the outcome. We have just looked at a verse, verse 16, where we are told that envy, strife, and confusion, and evil works. They are the outcome of worldly wisdom. Let's just take a quick look at James chapter 4. Amen. Verse 18 is, of course, the last verse of James 3. Chapter 4, look what Brother James has to say to us. 
Amen. He says, where do wars and fights come from among you? Now, he's not talking to unbelievers here. He's talking to children of God, men and women that are supposed to be following Jesus Christ. So where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for the pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war. Amen. Then jump down to verse number three. You ask and do not receive because you what? You ask amiss. How are you asking amiss? You ask amiss because you want to spend it on your pleasures. Then he says in verse 4, adulterers and adulteresses. Again, he's talking about spiritual adultery here. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity or hostility with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. So, amen, he goes from talking about, amen, in chapter 3, about the wisdom that comes from above, that's its origin, amen, and he ends talking about that. And in chapter 4, he starts talking about strife in the body. How many believe that we don't have any strife in this house? All right, well, good. We do. Okay, now, that's what we're talking about tonight. So they're striving. Can God work in mid strife? Well, he does. He's been doing it a long time. But amen. So let me, let's just talk about this. So as believers, again, we ought not to be fighting amongst ourselves. We ought not to be warring against each other. Why? Because that is worldly wisdom. And it always produces trouble. Everybody say it produces trouble. Wrong thinking produces wrong living. Now, one reason the world is in such a mess tonight is because men have refused to accept the wisdom of God. Now, you notice back in verse number 16, the word confusion is used. Everybody say confusion. It literally means instability or disorder. And this confusion comes or means disorder that comes from instability. So people that are filled with instability are going to be people that are confused. And they're working in the wisdom of this world. Amen. You see, faithful people are fruitful people. One of the things that you want to build into your life and you're serving God is a faithfulness. Being in the house of God. If you, if you say you're going to do something, you do it. If you can't do it, you let people know. Because there are some times that we are not able to perform as human beings what we said we would do. There's there just things that happen to us. Whether we don't have the ability, amen, we find out we don't have. But we need to be faithful. Everybody say faithful. Because faithful people are fruitful people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, so this word confusion is actually used in other places. Two of them here in James. James chapter 1 and verse number 8. James 1 and 8. Again, listen to what it says. Many of you may be aware of this verse. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. In other words... It means to be confused, which makes this individual disorderly. Amen. They're not a stability. Of, you want to establish stability in your walk with God. It, it's, it's, it's a sad thing when you have people that are long-time apostolics, and they haven't learned these things. And I'm here to tell you that not everybody that calls himself an apostolic have matured. Many of them are still back here, filled with confusion, filled with disorder, amen, working and operating not in the wisdom of God, but in the wisdom of man. In James chapter 3 and verse 8, where we have been reading, it tells us, but no man can, t can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil 
full of deadly poison. Same, same Greek word is used here. I'm not asking you to raise your hand, but, oh yes, I will. Okay, how many here has never, ever got into trouble with their tongue? Would you raise your hand tonight? <laughs> yes, my dear wife, I saw your hand go up there. Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay, good question. All right, good question. Unruly in James 3.8, unstable in James 1.8. All right. Now, if you would help me here, Nathaniel, would you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 20, and give it to us out of the message here? Can you, can you get it? We're going to get it out of the message here. Listen to what the message. If you're, let me, I'll just read it to you while he's finding it. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Amen. Verse 20. I want you to start there. We're going to read verse 20 and 21. But let me just read it to you out of the King James. For I fear, this is Paul speaking to the Corinthian church, lest when I come, I shall not find you such as I wish, and that I shall be found by you such as you do not wish, lest there be contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, backbiting, whispering, conceits, and then the word tumult, which is the last word there. That is also the same Greek word that we've read of far as being disorderly and unstable. Uh, have you found it? 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 20. I just want you all to see it. Hallelujah. Now, I don't use the, the message all the time, but I just like some, it gives me an excuse just to say some things. I don't need an excuse, actually, when I know the truth. But anyways, so... Here's what Paul says, I do admit that I have fears that when I come, you'll, be disappoint, you'll disappoint me, and I'll disappoint you. And it sounds like he's a preacher, man, a pastor. And in frustration with each other, we'll fall to pieces. Quarrels and jealousy and flaring tempers, taking signs, angry sides, angry words, vicious rumors, swelled heads, and general bedlam. That's the same word as the word tumult. General bedlam, just, it's chaos. It's like a room full of children that have no adult authority in it, and they have all, they're all on sugar. You have bedlam, chaos. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> now, verse 21. I don't look forward to a second humiliation by God among you compounded by hot tears over the crowd that keeps sinning over and over in the same old ways, who refuse to turn away from the pigsty of evil. That's why I like using the name. Sexual disorder and indecency in which they wallow. You know, I, have to, I don't even have to say anything, man. It's, all, it's very explicit here. So, confusion. Again, it leads to disorder. It's instability at work. All right, go to go one more to Luke 21 9. Luke 21 9. Amen. Again, Jesus uses the same word, or it's used when he speaks in Luke 21 and 9. He says to us, But when you hear of wars, and in the King, New King James says, commotions, do not be terrified. Same Greek word. It's bedlam, it's tumult, it's confusion. For these things must come to pass first, but the end will not come. Immediately. All right. A good example in the scripture of the wisdom of men is found at the Tower of Babel. Okay. Again, the wisdom of men deals with jealousy, and competition, and a party spirit. All these things contribute to confusion. In other words, the wisdom of men, it's all about me. And I know none of us are like that. It ain't about us. It's about him. It's about his kingdom. The less we talk about ourselves, the better. The more we talk about his kingdom, the better. The more we live for him, the better. Hallelujah. But anyways, the Tower of Babel, amen. Now, to the men building this Tower of Babel, it was a very wise thing. But from God's point of view, it was stupid. It was stupid and sinful. And so what did God do? 
the result is confusion when he comes down and in judgment, amen, confuses their ability to speak to one another, amen. And since that time, and by the way, the word Babel is actually a Hebrew word that we use today, meaning confusion. Well, that's a bunch of Babel. That's a bunch of confusion. This is what the wisdom of this world brings is confusion. Now, I want to say just a couple more things here before we move on. Amen. Back in chapter 3 and verse 16, it tells us that where envy and self-seeking and confusion, they exist, it says every evil thing is there. Now, let me ask you, I don't want you to raise your hand, but do we have confusion in this body? I'm not asking you to raise your hand. I'm not saying you're the, you're the confusion. I'm just asking you to think of the, there, there's areas that we need to pray in. We really need to pray in these. Seriously, we need to pray in these areas. Because where there is confusion, where there is tumult and bedlam and, and amen, it's all about me, spirit. Do you notice what it says there in verse 16? Every evil thing are there. That word evil there means of no account, wicked. Amen. If it was a basketball game, you'd be calling foul. We need to examine ourselves. It's always easy to examine our brothers. It really is. Amen. I find no fault in myself. We all say that. You need to, every every incident that we deal with in our life, we need to first address Ourself. I told you a couple weeks ago that our homes need to be places of peace. And I, I'm not stupid. I know that not all of our homes are places of peace. I know that. I know never things are not balanced as they should be according to the word of God. I'm not a dummy. I mean, I see the faces of people that walk in here that are frustrated and angry. I see people that have a hard time getting through to God. Let me tell you something. Amen. It should be no problem for us to walk in the house, throw up our hands immediately, and go right into the presence of God. We shouldn't have to get worked up. Over, we shouldn't have to have four or five songs before we finally catch up with God. Amen. We ought to come in already caught up with God, you see. We ought to come in walking in this spirit, filled with the peace of God. And if we're not, we need to change that in our life, not the life of the preacher, not the life in, you know, well, I only do it when we have certain songs. I'm sorry, but you understand how immature that is? I do it if I don't even like the song. And there are some songs that we sing I really don't particularly care for. If you want to know the truth, there are some songs I love dearly. Amen. And just a few weeks ago, we sang a bunch of songs, and I didn't particularly care for them. And I'm sitting in the back saying, dear God, are we in trouble today? And dear God, how wrong I was. And I'm glad I was wrong. Hallelujah. God just moved, and people reacted to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12 through verse 15. I don't know, we're not going to talk about the judgment seat of Christ tonight. But do you understand, every believer is going to go to the judgment seat of Christ. We're not going to be at the white throne judgment that you find in Revelations chapter 20. But every believer, everybody's going to go to the judgment seat of Christ. You know why? Because not everything we've done for God was pure. Sometime we were singing... Just because we wanted the accolades of other believers. Oh, you got a beautiful voice. Boy, did you really, did you really sing down the power of God? Or they, oh, I love this. Hey, yes, I did, didn't I? And so the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 12, now, now if everyone builds on this foundation with gold and silver and precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will become clear. For the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. We always have to check our motives. 
why you do what you, well, I'm doing it because I was coerced to do it. That's not a good motive. We should do everything out of love. But uh, let's be honest. We, many of us have done things that because somebody else just didn't do it. So we just did it because it needed to get done. Do it because you love Jesus. And you want to give him glory. Hallelujah. Now, amen. Therefore, let's go to chapter 4, verse 5, Nathan. Amen. Again, you understand God cuts through the fluff. He cuts through the fluff. He knows right where you're at. He knows why you're doing what you're doing. And the Bible says, therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes. Who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the heart. Then each one's praise will come from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The church at Smyrna said we are, we're, we're in poverty. This church that was suffering, you can read that. We're not going to go there. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. We're, we're in poverty. You know what God said? You're rich. You see, they had a wrong perspective of themselves. The church at Laodicea said, we have need of nothing. God says, you got need of everything. You're blind and naked and poor, and miserable and wretched. Amen. You see, God, he, he knows right where everything is at. The most important thing we can do is measure. Now, listen to me. I'm talking to people here right now who are involved in the ministries of this body. The most important thing that we can do is measure our ministries by the word of God and not by the wisdom of men. I told Sister Laura today, did you know that Jesus was not a handsome dude? Did you know that? He just was so contrary to what this world looks for. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53, he had no beauty that he would be desired. In a lineup of 10 men, he'd have probably been the last guy. He said, well, I, I like that guy. He's, he's my hunk. But everything in our world is based on the visual. We do very little about the eternal. And may I say, there's, there's a few people that are not married here. Man, do not do more than just base an individual upon what you see. That you're falling into trouble if you just look at, I'm telling you, ma'am, sir, she may look like an angel, but you may be getting a hold of a devil. And he may look like a hunk and be the biggest jerk on the planet. We do too much basing of our life, amen, by, again, what we see with the eye. Hallelujah. So I come again to us as a body, and because there are many battles among believers in the church, it lets us know that there's an absence of purity and peace. Okay? All these things suggest that something is wrong and that something is the absence of the wisdom of God. That's what's missing. Amen. When you have a flare out out in the parking lot and in the lobby and sometimes, God forbid, in this room here and people are jawing at one another, that is not the wisdom of God at work. That's the wisdom of men. Amen. God is not in that. And it will create confusion. Amen. Are you still in the house? Did, it, did I say anything that was offensive to you? Hallelujah. My God, help us, God, to operate in the wisdom of God rather than the wisdom of man. All right, now, we're, we're finishing up. Are you still in the house? Okay, so here is the outcome. We, we've talked now about the outcome of of, of the wisdom of this world. Let's, 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 let's talk about something good. Let's talk about the outcome of the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. Notice what it says in James 3.18. Let's go back to James 3.18. Listen to what it says in James 3.18. It says, Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who 
make peace. God's wisdom produces blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. Again, let me just back up here to go back to verse number 12. James 3 and 12. Listen to what it says here. Can a fig tree, which, amen, produces fruit. My brethren bear olives or a grape grape vine bear figs. Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh. Amen. He's talking here about fruit. Amen. We were talking about the behavior or the contrast of behavior between the two. Verse number 17. Just hang out with me here. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Notice what it says down there, full of mercy. And look what it says next, good fruits. The vast difference between the wisdom of this world and the wisdom of God. Amen. The wisdom of this world produces man-made results. God-given wisdom produces fruit. Everybody say fruit. Hallelujah. Now, again, just hang out with me. Fruit is the product of life. Now, when we think of fruit, we think of I got to go out and plant seed, right? Because the seed is in the fruit, and we plant that seed, and it brings forth more fruit, right? That's how, isn't that how it, that's how, are, are you with me? Did I lose you somewhere? Okay. But notice what it says there. In verse number 18, it's not talking about seed there, which is usually what you do. Seed is sown, and then from that sown seed comes fruit. That's not how it says it here. It says the fruit of righteousness is sown. Let's say the seed of righteousness. It says the fruit of righteousness is sown. Amen. So what are we, what is it saying? We share the fruit of God with others. And they are fed and satisfied by the fruit that we share with them. Are, are you with me? It's not a seed here. He's talking about this full grown fruit, this mature fruit that people can enjoy. Hallelujah. 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 Everybody turn your name and say, that's good stuff. It's not me. It's good stuff. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. All right. All right. Verse number seven. Chapter Galatians chapter six and verse seven. Praise God. Galatians six and seven. The law of God is true. The Bible says in verse seven, do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. Believers who sow God's wisdom of righteousness, they're not going to reap sin. They're going to reap peace instead of war. Hallelujah. That's what I'm saying. Our homes ought to be homes of peace. And if they're not homes of peace, somebody's been sowing, amen, with the word or the wisdom of this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the the law is what what we sow determines what we reap. It's very easy to retaliate. Is anybody's room never, ever retaliated? We've all retaliated. So if we sow... In man's worldly wisdom, we will sow sin and we will sow sow war and it will reap confusion in every evil work. Now, let me just say something. It's very easy to get caught up in conversations of talking about somebody else. Especially if you feel they're wrong. Now, you may be talking to your pastor and you may be praying with the pastor. That, that, that's fine. But I'm here to tell you tonight, you ought not to just be in phone conversation and just talk about people. You may say, you know, I, I, I feel a burden to pray for somebody. Would you join me in prayer? You don't have to go into large detail. You know, 
It's, it's the gossip that wants to know the intimate detail. Are, are you still in the house? Still in the house. I really got a problem with Facebook. You didn't expect that, did you? I really do. Facebook creates a lot of problems. And I've also come to an understanding that Facebook is not going to go away. As much as I don't like it. I don't like television a whole lot either, but it's not going to go away for a lot of people. Now hear me. When you write it down on Facebook, it's just as bad as when you speak it to them to their face. There's no difference in the sin. It's the same. Do you understand, those of you that work in the professional field, that when you are trying to get a job today in today's world, they'll not only interview you, but they will go on and see what you have posted. And there are people that have not got job because of what they posted on Facebook. My God, ladies and gentlemen, that same holy God that wants you to be careful with your mouth also wants you to be careful what you put down in print. All right? You understand me? Now, I'm going to say something ugly. How could we be so stupid to put something down that everybody and his mother can read? I don't understand it. I just know it's not the wisdom of God. So if you've got some garbage on Facebook about people, you need to get it off. Unfortunately, it's the deed's already done. It's a done deal. But you need to stop that. I don't even know who I'm talking to tonight. And that's probably the best thing I, I could have going for me right. I have no clue who I'm talking to. But be careful. You're not just dealing with people. You're also dealing with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go with me, if you would, to Proverbs 6. Verse 16 through 19. Let me tell you something about God. You, know, you believe God gets ticked off? There's something that God absolutely hates. Hates. In fact, the strongest word of hatred in the Bible is the word abomination. All right, whenever you read in the scripture, Old Testament, New Testament, whatever you, where it says it's an abomination to the Lord. You understand, I don't care what you say, it's the Old Testament, it doesn't matter. Wrong. If it was abomination to the Lord in the Old Testament, it's still an abomination to the Lord because the Lord does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He hates some things. He really does. He hates some things. You know, let me give you a list of things. I'm really wanting to focus on the last one, but let me give you uh, Proverbs 6, 16. Did I tell you that, Nathan? Well, I am now telling you that. There are six things the Bible says the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to Him. It means He hates them. He has a strong, intense dislike. He loathes them with a passion. I'm talking about God. I'm not talking about your neighbor. He loathes them with a passion. A proud look, a lying tongue, Hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift to running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and the last one is the one I really wanted to focus on, and one who sows discord among the brethren. In other words, a troublemaker in the family. And God hates it. It's an abomination to him. This is the word of God. This ain't Mark Barnett, okay? This is his word. Do you, do you believe his word tonight? Do you believe it's true? Do you believe that God is going to hold into account every idle word, every word that was not used productively? So I got I to gotta live right. I got if I, if I'm on, what's Twitter anyways? It's like Facebook. I, I got it on my iPad and never used it. I got six friends that have been waiting for months to be my friend. And I've never, ever, they ain't my, I, well, I, let me back up here. Some of them are my friends, but I just don't go on Facebook. 
You're going to reach out and call someone. Touch me and say hi. Hallelujah. Where am I going with this? Would you help me? Let's, let's clean up our living for God, all right? Let's clean up our living for God. Let's live righteous, holy lives. Amen. Let, let, let's, the, you're going to deal with, we're believers. We're going to have people within the body that are going to, they, they, ain't, they ain't all praying. Let me repeat that. They ain't all praying. And I, I can tell you this, when I don't pray, I don't play very good. It is good when I pray, because then I play right. You understand, there is a bad side of me. And you don't want to see the ugly. Amen. You want to see that guy that's filled with the fruit of God's spirit, love, and all that good stuff. Hallelujah. And sometimes he has to pray. Amen. Confess to God his transgressions. Amen. Because sometimes it's not all good stuff. I mean, sometimes the old me, amen, somehow gets up. I, I, you never have any problem with that, Brother Mitch, do you? <laughs> <laughs> the Bible says he who holds his tongue is wise. <laughs> In the multitude of words, sin is not absent. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we don't want to be a troublemaker in the body. We, we need to pray healing in this place. God wants to work. He is bringing people to us that need God, whose lives are a mess, terrible, it was, you know, it was so wonderful. I don't know if you saw Greg. He was, I don't, was he sitting by you? But I, well, I, I don't know where he's at tonight. But I'm here to tell you, as he was there, as we were singing and worshiping God, tears were just streaming down his face. Let me tell you something. God is working. Sometimes we don't see the immediate results. And, amen. But God is at work. Amen. Lee over here and, John, who really, again, probably doesn't even know how to really pray at the altar. God is working. He is working. Amen. We need to believe these things. The Bible tells us that, amen, when, when, when sin abounds, when it's so dark out there, that you just begin to wonder, understand this, that grace abounds even more. Hallelujah. So in this dark hour, I mean, we can spend all our time talking about how bad it is and how ugly, and it's going to get even worse than it is today. It really is. We're headed, amen, we're going off a cliff. Amen. Kenosha, I mean, they, our paper just enjoys putting it, the issue of the judges ruling in Milwaukee. Amen. They were talking about it. He had a picture on the front page of this same-sex couple. Amen. And I don't hate them. I just hate sin. And somebody told me, do you know that race scene? Amen. They would not actually, amen, in their court system, they would not, amen, marry anybody of the same sex. I said, good for them. Good for them. Now, I'm going on record probably for the 190th time. It's wrong and it's sin. The issue is not how wonderful and kind the person is, how loving they be, how generous they be. Amen. I'm not attacking their character. I'm just telling you that that kind of lifestyle is sin. Just like if you're living with a woman or a man and you're living out of marriage, that's also sin. Amen. You can't go to heaven practicing that stuff. Okay? I don't even know why I'm saying this. I'm just, I'm going on record again for the 195th, 191st time now. Amen. And, and, when, and they are going to come to this body. And when they come with their lives wrecked and ruined, you love them. You love them. Everybody say, I'm going to love them. Hallelujah. I wish I had time. Amen. I think we did it a few weeks ago. John Russell's testimony. If you ever go on YouTube. And get the, get the testimony of John Russell, pastor now. Amen. He came into Brother Mangan's church in Alexander, Louisiana. When he, he said it, his own words. When he came in, he hadn't bathed in about 40 days. And, he, and when he came in, people came up and said, so good to see you. So good to have you here. 
sat on the front row, ended up in their grace house. And now he's preaching the gospel and pastoring. You see, you don't know what God can do in anyone's life. So don't give up on people. Don't give up on them because they ain't right and they're, they're all goofy and crazy today. Don't give up on them. Pray for them. Let the wisdom of God work through you. Amen. Amen. I'm coming to close. Go to Proverbs 3.13. I'm coming to close. I am, I am. You see, Lot followed the world's wisdom and it brought trouble to the camp of Abraham. Abraham followed God's wisdom and brought peace. Lot's decision. The Bible says he was a man that was vexed every day by, by Sodom. And it's, the Bible says that Lot was righteous. Okay, it says that. You can't, you can't deny that. That's what the Word of God... He was living in a very unrighteous city. Okay. He was making money. He was prospering. He no doubt was becoming one of the leaders of the city because he was in the town gate, and that's where all business was transacted. Okay. It is, it is no doubt, it is no doubt that he talked to them about where they were at because they, he got some negative response from them. He called them brothers, though. I wonder about that. But Lot's decision to live in Sodom led to good-for-nothing works. And everything he lived for went up in smoke, but his life was saved. Abraham's wisdom, his decision to allow God to lead him and be filled with the wisdom of God led to the blessing of his household that ultimately led to the blessing to the whole world. Hallelujah. So I finish with this. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God. Oh God. Blessed is your name. Let's stand tonight in this room. Blessed is your name. Blessed is your name. I want to operate in your wisdom, God. I don't want to operate in mine. Oh, God. Let's just take a moment right now. And let's just pray. Let's thank God for his precious word. Let's just ask God just to help us to receive it, God. Give us revelation, Father. Open our understanding, God. Hallelujah. I want to operate in the wisdom of God, not in the wisdom of this world. Oh, God, oh, God, the wisdom that comes from above. Oh, hallelujah, is what I want to operate in. Oh, God, I don't want to operate in that wisdom that's, oh, God, originated, oh, God, of this world and sensual and devilish. Oh, God, oh, God, I want my behavior to be a blessing. Oh, God, help us as believers to heal rifts, to help, oh, God, in bringing peace to people's lives, even within this body. Help us, God, to further, oh, God, righteousness, to further righteousness, God. Hallowed to push it forward, to triumph with righteousness, to lead the banner of righteousness, oh, God, in everything that we do. Bless your people. Strengthen them today. Keep them, Father. Draw them near to you, God. Draw them near to you, we pray. In the precious name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. Thank you for your precious word. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God.